Hi, folks. My name is Trisha Friedman. And as you may know, if you are following Shifting Schools, our free guides around generative AI, if you're listening to our podcast, you may have already heard me talk about how important we think it is to center the human skills of collaboration, creativity, communication when we are talking about generative AI. We're also really big on making sure that we're showing you the how. So I wanted to share with you a recent strategy that I tried out when I was running a workshop experience for some pre-service teachers. I thought it was pretty important to model to them how I might embed generative AI in a way that, again, is highly collaborative um, and I think also invites some creativity. So to start off, our workshop was about media literacy and ways that we can incorporate media literacy into a range of different subject areas. So one of the intro activities my cohort did was we took this four corners activity prompt, which I refer to as forced analogy, and I told the participants they needed to pick one of those four corners to complete the prompt with and share their response in the chat. Now, I said as an option, you'll see the link where you can click the bot buddy for help. I said this isn't mandatory. It is 100% optional. And I said if you are perhaps struggling a little bit to come up with your answer or you're having a tough day, the bot buddy is going to be there. So again, I was interested to see um, what students would do in terms of would they pick it first? Would they try first? And I wanted to give them that experience so that we could have a conversation after. For those who did click the bot buddy, I had already done the prompt. So it linked them over to a Google doc that had my prompt and the output that I'll show you in just a moment. So I let them know I was using ChatGPT. I had uploaded the image and you can see my prompt there that says generate a table which provides a set of ways to interpret each of the four choices. Explain ways to think about each choice in distinctive ways. Create five different interpretations for each and ensure they look at this prompt in very different ways. Now, what I'm trying to do here is also model prompt engineering. The output for that prompt can be seen here in part. Um, again, in the link for this video, you can find the full link to the slides. So if you want to go through and see um, each and every one of the full outputs, you're more than welcome to do that. And after each activity, I had students in groups talk about whether or not this would, was supportive to them. I had them talk through maybe how they would have changed the prompt. And I also had them talk a little bit more about how having the option to use generative AI was useful and how perhaps it might have been useful for them to just see the way that I modeled this. Now, I'm going to show you two more examples of ways that I embedded a little bit of uh, scaffolding via generative AI. In this activity, we were going to use the question formulation technique where, um, as you can see, I had a timer ready. The text was this resource from on the media. And in the five minutes, students were asked just to come up with as many different questions as they could about this resource. And I said again, if you are looking for some ideas, you need some help to get started, you can click on the bot buddy for help. And when they clicked on that, again, they were taken over to a Google doc that modeled how I would prompt it. So I uploaded the image and the prompt says, you are a university student who is interested in asking high quality questions about this resource. Draft three questions that would be on your mind as you've been studying education and you are interested in becoming a middle or high school teacher. Again, there was the output. And in the design, I intentionally put a little bit of a gap, by the way, between my prompt and the output. And I did that by design so students were really thinking about the prompt. Now, one more example that I'm going to share with you and again, I'll point out that we had a conversation after each of these really thinking critically about whether or not this was useful help 
what I could have done differently to have made it more useful. And my third example is here, where we had viewed a uh, commercial and the conversation that we were going to have is this one, asking how might one, just one commercial turn into an experiential learning project. To help them with that, they had a few resources, a uh, resource on creating focus groups, a resource on do's and don'ts of interviews. And then once again, you can see at the bottom, I said, if you need some help in getting started with ideation, you can click on the bot buddy for more. So you can see the prompt here. And I was specific in referencing the commercial that we took a look at. This was the Emmy nominated commercial folks may remember from a uh, Super Bowl a few years back. Here's part of the output. Again, you can head over to the video description if you want to see the whole thing. And again, I just want to reference that this was set up as optional support. First and foremost, we had a great conversation about um, as our session went on, if folks felt more or less inclined to click on the bot buddy, I made sure that we had time to reflect on how helpful or not that support actually was, as well as what we could have done to have made it more useful. And I really focused on what I refer to as a three to one model or a group model when debriefing the support or the scaffolding from the generative AI. It wasn't just about seeing the uh, rough draft thinking, so to speak, from the generative AI. It was more about having a human small group to talk through and debrief that support with. And I bring that up because I really do think. I'm really glad to see so many folks talking about the environmental reality that yes, generative AI drains energy. And I think this is a model that mentions, hey, we don't all need to be using it. In this example, for the whole class, only one person used it and I documented it and we had that scaffolding. Is that a model that sometimes works? Or what if we were just having one person in a small group decide and design the prompts uh, so that we can revise them. I do think that that collaborative approach is a really good one to model. I also think, again, really being transparent with students about uh, prompt design so that they can, as a class, as a cohort, deconstruct, debrief, see what works, what maybe needs to be done differently, and also just think about ways that we maybe want to experiment with the technology. So again, bringing this back to the reality that it is all about that conversation and collaboration, right? I do think that this is an interesting way to do some scaffolding. We had a great conversation and debrief about the importance and significance of scaffolding um, and perhaps the power of just having it there as an option. We'd love your feedback, your thoughts on ways that maybe we can embed this support and we can be talking about it so that we are building our AI literacy together through conversation. Thanks again for watching, folks. We'd love to hear from you um, and to get more of your thoughts on ways that, again, it's always focused on community building and conversation. Thanks again.